It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Okay, basketball fans, with me, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, I'm Ernie Johnson. You're watching 2K Sports, but you know that already. Tonight's broadcast will feature the Milwaukee Bucks as they go up against the New York Knicks. For New York, they are hungry for a win here. Last season, they got swept by this team. Four straight losses, something they haven't forgotten. And already the grind of the new season starting to show. Shaq, how do you stay fresh for the long haul, both oh. as a player and as a just a massive individual? Veteran guys, you got to know how to pace yourself. And minute restrictions, you know, it, it really has become a bigger part of the game. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, injury histories, Always taking into account now. This is why you have to develop depth. How do you stay fresh for the long haul? Oh, man, I have this drink I put together. Oh, Willie, really? what is it? Oh, yeah, it's a little, like, I take tomatoes, right? And I squish them up, and, I get to, and it gets real, like, tomato sauce. Uh -huh. And I put that in. And then I take uh, kale salad. I put uh -huh. that in. What are you I making, put spaghetti? Ginger. I put ginger in it. Yeah. Put that in. I put a little... Cayenne pepper in, a little bell pepper. Sounds Ernie. disgusting. Ernie, he's he, making lasagna over there. Sounds disgusting. Can I get some of your lasagna? Oh, man, it's, it's a pepper. It makes you pep up. Yeah, I don't do it for us. Thanks for tuning in. Also give Broadcasting live, 2K Sports presents the NBA. It's Monday night. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony, Brent Berry, and David Aldridge. Special treat for our viewers this evening, the sports guy Bill Simmons is with us. It's half of a special treat as Brent Berry is, but I'll, I'm going to do my best. Brent Berry's pretty good, He's really he? good yeah. at stuff, yeah. yeah. He reads you a lot. Half a treat is better than a whole treat, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Honored to be here. First chance of the season for them to go up against this Knicks team. Last season, they won all four games, showing complete dominance. And they rolled over this team last season, beating them every time they faced off. Yeah, it was a completely one-sided season series, and that was no surprise to anyone. This first game between them should give us an idea if they're on a little more even ground this season. And nothing tips off a broadcast like getting the lowdown from the sidelines. And we've got David Aldridge there for that. David, good evening. Well, Kevin, we know how fortunate the Bucks are that they uncovered a top five player in Giannis Adendokounmpo. But this creates pressure on him to chase a title while he's in his prime. And with their coaching change and roster changes, every move is under heightened scrutiny. Kevin? He wants to win in Milwaukee, D.A. Uh, can they help him get there? And the Bucks enjoying a brand new half billion dollar home. Bill, what will it mean, you think, for this franchise in Milwaukee? I think it means it'll stay in Milwaukee. Uh, they won't Thankfully. go to Seattle, so I think that was a good thing. The big thing is Giannis. He's got a few years left, and they've got to build a winning team around him or else you, it threatens to become a 2010 LeBron Cleveland situation. You I, I would say they have two years. You love to compare eras and players. Yes. Who could you even think of that compares down to Takumbo? Nobody. There's nobody. He needs to learn how to shoot. And when that happens, it's all over, and I don't know how you guard him. But I still think he was a year away from becoming the real MVP candidate that I think he's going to be this year. So a look at our starters for the Knicks. Hardaway and Porzingis, your small and power forwards. Elikina out there with Trey Burke, and it's Cantor in at the five, down low. Now here's Bledsoe, following the miss by Porzingis. Bledsoe passes to Kumbo. Porzingis with the block. From about 16, that's good from Burke on the assist from Hardaway. So many different offenses that Tim Hardaway Jr. has played in, but he's trying to improve in his on-court awareness. A good show of it there. Now here's Bledsoe. He had 34 points in the win against Indiana. Andre Kumbo with the ball. Now guarded by Porzingis. Near the three-point line, it's Bledsoe. It's hauled in by Porzingis. For the Milwaukee Bucks, they won their last contest, that game against Indiana. To the paint, and the rejection by Anadokounmpo. Well, you go in there weak like that, and a guy like Giannis with his length is going to throw it away. Yeah, early on, three misses to open the game. Their offense right now still trying to find its way. Now here is Hardaway. 
Nine points last game out. Bledsoe right side. And here's Brockton from the arc. Misses that one. He's 0 for 1 from the floor. They are 0 for the game thus far. 0 of 4 here. Still looking for their first man. Pass to Burke. Knocked loose. Adetokounmpo up top. He had a 27-point outing in the last game against Indiana. I also thought he did a tremendous job in terms of timing in that game, swatting away some shots. Ended up with three blocks in that game. Here's Nilakina. On his out of the Kumbo, making his last shot. Screened by Porzingis. Now, here's Burke. Guarded by Bloodzo. Shot clock at five. Here's Nilakina. A putback, and Kent are able to finish. Like when his motor is running and he's playing with high levels of energy, Cantor is a monster on the offensive glass. Bill, several of your books have been bestsellers. How did it feel to see your work so well-received around the world? I think I was really happy that the basketball book did well because I spent a long time writing it, and it was 700 pages. And when it got mailed to me, it was so big, I thought people would just be terrified of it. And, you know, it turns out... I think out, they embraced the Yeah, science. I think they did. They liked it. I designed it for people to be able to put on their toilet or bring on an airplane or whatever they want to do with it. But uh, I was always amazed that there wasn't a basketball book that tried to kind of group all these other books and some of the opinions and all the misinformation. Like the fact that, honestly, the reason I wanted to write the book was just that people thought Will Chamberlain was better than Bill Russell. And yet every single thing written in the 60s was that Bill Russell was better. And all the players would say Bill Russell was better. And when they played together, Bill Russell's team won. So it's like, how do we get to the point where people think Will Chamberlain was better? So it was that and some other stuff that made me want to write the book. And the shot goes in. Good combination of power and finesse by Cantor. Helps him finish strong through contact. Bloodso kicks to Lopez. And off target as he starts the game 0 for 1. Here's Nilakina looking for his first basket still in this one. The pass to Cantor. There's a screen by Cantor. Hardaway, no good. Well executed, great rhythm. You've got to finish that one. Well, it's like Thanksgiving out there, carving out space off the screen. Just couldn't complete the play. And how about the initiative there from Antetokounmpo? Excellent at seeing lanes to the basket and then just taking advantage. And the foul on Eric Bledsoe. That's his first foul. Cantor inside. Lopez covering. There's a screen by Cantor. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. How about the touch from Porzingis demonstrating just how comfortable he is operating in that area of the floor. Now here's Brogdon. He's guarded closely. Cantor against Lopez. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. Now we've seen some top prospects for Go College enter the G League straight out of high school. What do you think is the future of the G League, and do you like where it sits right now? I do. I actually, I wish they spent more money on salaries. I and agree. I, I wish they blew it out. I mean, I think this is the first year we've had 30 G mm -hmm. League teams. This should be the number one place you'd want to go after high school. You should not want to go to college. Mm -hmm. You should want to go to a triple a it's awesome league that's set up and they're bringing kids up and down off that g league roster all yeah, the time it's just better and you, you're gonna have a better chance to succeed as a professional basketball player you see the situation we're in now with the one and done guys they go to college they show up in september they're playing all the way through till march whenever they get knocked out they drop out of college <laughs> and they might get they might last you know till round two in the tournament which is what, March 20th? Right. And they're out. Mm -hmm. So they've been in college for six and a half months. How's that a good system? They didn't even finish two semesters. So I would much rather see the G League work and and I, I don't understand why they don't spend a little more on it and just make it like a force. I don't think the moves are that hard. 
The Bucks trail. In the corner, Middleton with it. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Middleton's got his second bucket of the night. Middleton only takes a second to get that shot off. Such a good catch and shoot game. Lopez with the steal. Up the floor. Here's on to Takumbo. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. Outside Hardaway. Down low. Here's Nilakina. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from the paint. Pass to on the Kumbo. From 12 feet out, and he gets it to go. On to the Kumbo, he's got six. It's going to take a little more to get a Tentacumbo off of his mark there. Adept at finishing those difficult shots. Persingas with a screen on Bloodsome. To the middle. Porzingis against Zondacumbo, and the shot goes in from Chris Stapps, Porzingis. Bill, we know when you're writing that you love to incorporate pop culture references. How did that begin with you? Well, it began because in college, I was dropping them in columns, and people were responding. I, I think pop culture probably mattered more when I was in college in the 80s and 90s because, you know, we didn't have the internet back then. People, it was harder to connect with people he didn't know, basically you had sports and pop culture and politics. Those were the three ways. If right. I'm getting to know you, what are the three things we're gonna talk about? I didn't want to talk about politics with anybody, so the other two things for me were sports <laughs> pop culture. I was also an only child in the 70s with uh, only five or six TV channels watching Brady Bunch, Partridge Family, Sanford and Son, Jefferson's, Good Times, <laughs> all that stuff. And you know, that stuff just soaks into your DNA and that's it. And Bill, in talking about the connection between pop culture, sports, and basketball during your career, through it all, you've always been a writer, though, haven't you? Always been a writer. Only that was the only child of me. The thing is, though, I would have watched more basketball, but basketball wasn't on. Right. You know, I try to explain this to people how lucky they are to be able to watch. They can't believe these finals were tape delayed. Well, just but think about the day to day, right? Like Magic Johnson. I feel like I saw his whole career, but I really didn't. Like. His first couple of years in L.A., they, I think CBS was only showing like six or seven regular season games. On Sunday afternoon. In the playoffs, they would bump them off. Yep. Um, USA, I think, got the contract in maybe 1982. But for the most part, like, I love George Gervin. I probably saw him play in person twice, and I saw him on TV maybe 10 times, mm -hmm. 12 times. And now he, I could watch Giannis every day. And if Giannis dunks, I can see it on Twitter five minutes later, five seconds later. So, I think people are lucky. You guys should appreciate how lucky you are out there. <laughs> right side, out of the Kumbo. And the slam dunk by Hunter Takumbo. Well, a big reason why Della Vadova is out there is because he can see who's available. Here's Moutier. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. For Milwaukee, they've gone 6 of 13 from the field, just under the 50% mark. Della Vidova kicks to Ante de Kumbo. And the layup's good off the glass. Ante de Kumbo's got 12 in the game. Ante de Kumbo's physical gifts on, on a dunk last season, he literally jumped over the 6 6 Tim Hardaway Jr. He. You remember the play? Yeah, I think I think he's going to dunk from behind the foul line during he a might, game. He might. Mainly because it's so easy for him, because mm -hmm. it's like two steps and he can do it. But I, the last guy I remember being able to do what Giannis does was younger LeBron, where LeBron was such a sick athlete, like in that 2008, 2009 range, that he almost shrunk the court. And he would get a steal at half court, and then in two steps he was at the rim, exactly. and you would go, wow, how did that happen? And Giannis is like that. I think Anthony Davis is a little bit like that, too, where it's just the geometry of the court seems screwed up when they're out there. Ilya Sova, he's checked in for Giannis on Tacumbo. Here's Moutier. Out to Lee. And Zonia on the wing. From outside, off the mark. The Bucs have gone an even 50% from the field. They are 7 of 14 for the game. And they're on the break. And finished off by Hezonia. Lee does a great job of uh, sticking with it and then finding a teammate. The Bucks shooting well right out of the gates here at around 50%. Back 
to Della Vidova. Henson with the screen. Henson a screen on Robinson. Snell no good. That's not the type of opportunity he fails to convert very often. And they take the lead. And the Knicks lead by two. That's pretty hard to guard. You love how fast Courtney Lee gets that floater off before the defense can react to him. Now here is Della Vadova, defended by Moutier. Lee with the steal. And now the Knicks on the break. There's Azania. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And a look now at the four areas where shots can come from. The paint, mid-range, and shots from deep all broken down for the Knicks. And they've been avoiding those deep threes. They're capable of knocking those shots down from long range. But so far, they, they've really been reluctant to let it fly from that free throw line extended three-point shot. First free throw is good. falls so he hits both of them Bill we know about the love affair you have with the NBA and you've written about it for so long started with uh, the four dollar ticket in Boston with your dad yeah my dad bought season tickets for the 1973-74 Boston Celtics mm -hmm. and it was only one ticket and I think it was four dollars a game probably like 160 bucks total and he used to carry me and mainly because they didn't want to pay for a babysitter <laughs> so I started going to games that year probably sleeping through a lot of them and they won the title. How old were you in 72? So I was four. Four years old. I don't, or I, I'm not going to lie, I don't remember anything from that season. The first season I remember is the year later when they, they lost before the finals to Washington. And then the year later they won the famous finals against Phoenix, the triple overtime game. I was there. Was Cowan, was Cowan's on the team? Cowan, Havacek, yep. JoJo White. Yep. And uh, I was at the triple overtime game in the 76 finals was probably the most famous NBA game ever of the I don't you know the kids out there now would nominate like game 7 2016 or yeah. something like that. triple overtime game was the most famous oh game goodness. ever and I slept through the entire second half in the first overtime oh, no. <laughs> but then woke up because everybody was standing the yeah. whole second overtime yeah. so I had to get up and there's the foul it's on Tony Snell that's his first foul And now, here's his Onya. Not a lot of room. Doubled by Henson. Four on the clock. Robinson sets a screen for Moutier. At the tip. Great positioning on the putback. Oh, smooth. Guys, very good job getting himself in close enough that he could just tip it back in. Well said. Those kind of plays in the offensive glass can tell the story sometimes, can't they? Now here's Ilias Ova. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Not going to go that time. New York leading by four. Passes it to Hazania. Buries it down low. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. And here is Della Vidova. 106 left in the first. And here's Ilyasova outside. Drops in the tray. Ilyasova's got himself on the board with three there. Well, that defender up in Ilyasova's personal space, and he had no problem rising up and using his height to drain the jumper. Well, it's one thing to play good defense, but then to alter the shot and get the rebound, that's a good day's work. New York comes into this one following a loss to the Boston Celtics. And there's the call by the official. They'll count the basket here following the goaltending call. Yeah, that's a tough call for the refs to make there. I'm not sure it was on the way down, but that's, that's how they saw it. Here's Della Vidova. 
We've got 33 seconds left to play here in the first. Inside. And there's Ilyasova on the assist from Delavidova. Ilyasova's got his second basket of the night. Lee with the ball. 11 points for him in that last game against Boston. Just five on the clock. Pass to Moutier. Here's the teardrop. No dice on the putback jam. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. Malcolm Brogdon was the 2016-17 NBA Rookie of the Year. He spoke about Giannis Antetokounmpo and his willingness to listen and learn. He's going to listen, whether you're giving him advice. Even as a rookie, he was listening, and I would listen to him, but he was actually, if I saw something as a point guard, he would actually listen to me and try it out the next play, and that's special. You don't have many guys at his status that are, that are doing that. Yeah, that's very rare indeed, being a sponge early on and Greg soaking up new ways to expand your game is important. Kevin, no question at all. Plus, the humility. That knowing your teammates can help you grow. Easy to see why they love him in Milwaukee. Well, up to this point, a closely contested game as we start the second quarter. And what stands out to you from New York in this one? through that first one uh, they've turned this thing into a track beat love the pace they're playing with anytime you can get your offense going without the defense setting up you've got a huge advantage here are the five New York has to start here in the second Moody and Lee make up the backcourt as is up there with Knox and it's Robinson in at the five now here is Della Vadova down low Henson and he lays it straight in Edson's got his second basket of the game. Bill, you've watched the NBA evolve. Talk about some of the biggest changes over the last decade you've seen. The three-point line and, and the threes or foul shots philosophy, I think, is the biggest thing. Just the pace of the game has really improved and, and to a really pleasing way for fans. Like, just what, what Steve Nash was doing last decade and those Suns teams, that everybody's playing that way now. I think the social media and... The, the players basically getting rid of the wall between them and the fans using social media, using Instagram, and we just feel like we know these guys better. And their ability to control their own message now versus where they were 10 years ago, Ooh. it all started with the decision in LeBron James and his carry through this whole decade. And these guys now, they can get whatever message out they want. They can criticize the president. They can criticize their own team. They can ask for a trade. Mm -hmm. If they get called out by some writer or somebody who writes a hit piece, they can go back <laughs> at the guy and sick all their fans <laughs> on the on the writer. And the Knicks making a change here. Ennis Canner's checked in for Robinson. Porzingis is coming in for his own. Neil Aquina, he's checked in for Lee. And Trey Burke subbed in for Moutier. It's Brogdon on the wing. And now Knox running the floor all by himself. Throws down the breakaway jam. Easy to understand why people are high on Neil Aquina. His defensive instincts are off the charts. Going back to our topic from a moment ago, Bill, you mentioned the interaction between players and social media and how that's become a new facet, a skill we're seeing daily from players. Uh, there's just way more accountability now. And I, I'm really impressed by how polished the guys are that come in the league now. And I, I think the LeBron generation, LeBron, Wade, some of Chris Bosch, some of those guys from the last generation that came up and became vets and really knew how Paul Pierce, who knew how to handle their business. Now these new guys come in, they're 19, 20 years old, and they act like they're 30. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see it at the games. Shocking. Whereas in the 90s, it was a free-for-all, mm -hmm. and you had these guys who, if you gave them a live <laughs> mic, you were terrified. <laughs> and now these guys are 19 years old Polished. giving, like, you know, long interviews to reporters. It's like, how are you doing this? Tatum in particular is very Tatum's impressive. already 
good at being a bad interview. He's like he doesn't, he doesn't say anything. He knows how to dodge any question. It's like you're 19. How do you know how to do this? Unbelievable. Bill, the way that super teams are being put together right now, good or bad for the league? I'm confused. I have been watching this league since I was a kid. We've always had super teams. There, there's never been an era where we didn't. What do, what do people think the Jordan era Bulls were? And what do they think the Shaq Kobe Lakers were? And this is what, how the league is. I think what bothers people this time around specifically is that the Warriors won 73 games and they added Kevin Durant. Now, I, I get it. I get why it bothers people. On the other hand, your job as a franchise is to tilt the competitive advantage in any way you can toward your favor. They did a great job building their team. They did a great job building enough cap space for this year that everybody knew was coming, the summer of 2016. We knew the cap was going to jump. And they played it perfectly, and they got Kevin Durant out of it. He played it perfectly, too. He was on a team. He wasn't going to win the title in OKC. He wasn't going to win the title playing with Westbrook. Not to sound like a Durant apologist, but he wants to win a title and beat LeBron James. If you're going to do that, you're going to try to get on the best possible team you can. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, the Knicks hope to build a contender around their star player, Kristaps Porzingis. He Take said playoff experience would be Two huge shot. at this point in my career. The sooner, the better. That's the only thing I'm focused on. What I need to do on the court to play better, make my team win. Kevin will see if they can get there together. Thanks, D.A. And that one falls for Neela Kina. And, Bill, we were discussing how teams are constructed in recent years. You know, the changes in 2016 to camp space. How, how Kevin Durant landed with the Warriors. I see the analogy that, oh, it's like stacking a pickup game and just grabbing the best four guys and just beating people on a pickup court for four hours. But that's the thing, the league isn't a pickup game. The league, everyone operates by the same rules. And the Warriors- Everybody had a shot at him. Everyone had a shot, the Celtics had a shot. He didn't want to interview with the Lakers. The Knicks had cap space, they didn't have a chance. The Wizards had cap space, he was from Maryland, Maryland they didn't right. want to go there. So, you know, I, I think the Warriors should get a little more credit for how smart they were with everything. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. Burke with it, now guarded by Bloodsoe. Back to Porzingis, launches a three. New York, no good that time either. Well, the defense better look up and say thanks. Leaving guys that wide open is not a recipe for success. Antetokounmpo passes to Brogdon. And he goes in for the dunk. And about Brogdon showing a little bit of the bunnies there. The Knicks leading by four. Now Burke. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. That's on Brooke Lopez. Nice work to get it inside and draw the contact. For New York, they have hit all four of their chances so far in this one. And last season, as a team, they knocked down 79% of their free throws. So those are numbers oh, you'll be happy two shots. with. Two shots. shot. The first one falls. Off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. Yeah, a nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. Lopez a screen. Back to Anadokounmpo. It's rebounded by New York. Persingas has got his fourth rebound in this one. And there's the call on Malcolm Brogdon. That is his first foul of the game.
Lopez with the steal. And he was camped in just the right spot to swipe that pass away down low. It's hauled in by Persingas. And you're just not going to see him do that very often. Usually when he rises up, there's a guarantee it's going down. Now you can see the defense is so shifted over to where Kristaps Porzingis is that they lose track of the situation and he burns them with the pass. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Now, here's Adetokounmpo. 12 points for him. Bledsoe kicks to Lopez. Outside, Adetokounmpo. Shot clock at five. Middleton for three. Buries the long-range jumper. Middleton's got seven points in the game. And they are absolutely stroking it from beyond the arc. Burke, the pass to Persingas. Kumbo pulls it in. Andre the Kumbo's got his third rebound on the night. Middleton drives in over Hardaway. That one's in there. The next lead is cut down to two on the bucket for Middleton. Yeah, you don't want to leave Middleton from that area. His mid-range game is on fire, draining those shots often. Porzingis with the ball, now guarded by Middleton. Hardaway with a wide-open look, off target from outside. Man, that's a clean shot, too. You got to sink those. He must be disappointed that he blew that chance. Good on the triple. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. And here is Burke following the three from Eric Bunce. Burke kicks to Porzingis. Cancer with a screen on Anadokounmpo. Back to Burke. Stolen by Bloodsoe. Here we go, one on one. Here's Brogdon. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Well, Brogdon being the rookie of the year and coming in and doing a great job for the Milwaukee Bucks. This is a guy who could play either guard position and has a great mentality and great poise as a point guard. It's his first trip to the line. He misses the free throw. He hits the second from the line. Now here's Burke. He has five. He dishes it to Hardaway. They need this. Good on the shot. Hardaway has got the game tied up here for New York. Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr. is just a tremendous athlete. He spots a great route to the rim and doesn't settle. Logged in the pass to Lopez. Kicks it to Bloodsoe. Nice ball movement by Milwaukee. Here's Honda Takumbo. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. Uh, more good work on the glass there. When it's all said and done, I think rebounding might tell the story in this game. Here's Nilakina. He's got six. Ball's knocked loose. Six on the shot clock. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. A moment now to see how the schedule is looking for Milwaukee. On Wednesday, they'll be facing Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. And then on Friday, they'll face off against Jimmy Butler and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Cantor against Lopez. Lopez a screen. Bledsoe dishes to Lopez. Good, and Bledsoe gets the assist. Bledsoe's got three assists in the game. 
Good awareness from EB there. He knows that's his job. Get the ball to the open guys as the point guard. New York calls timeout. And a new group in for the Knicks. Robinson's checked in for Cantor. Mario Hazonia comes in for Perzingis. Lee's checked in for Nilakina. And it's Moutier in for Trey Burke. Now, here's Moutier. He's coming off a 10-point game against Boston. And there's the foul. It's on Tony Snell. That's foul number two for him. Well, there are good fouls, and then there's those fouls. That's not, not a good one. Limits himself on defense, and he can't nearly be as physical for the rest of the period. And sometimes you think maybe they're just getting a little too comfortable with the lead, maybe a bit too casual this quarter. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. Hazonia kicks to Robinson. Here's the screen. Now here's Moutier, guarded by Bloodsoe, stolen by Bloodsoe. And it's the Bucks on the break. DiVincenzo. You know, these are the guys you need to be aware of. If you don't want your pocket picked, <laughs> here are last season's steals. Leaders. Third is Eric Bledsoe. He showed such tremendous defensive instincts. Trust me, nobody wanted him guarding them last year. And he knocks down the first one. He's off on the second. Knicks trail by six. Lopez with the steal. To the middle. Pulls it up. Robinson with the block. And here we go. Fast break. moody has got it. And he sinks that one. Hitting the back of the rim on the way in. moody has got six here in this quarter. Milwaukee leading by four. Bledsoe kicks to Antetokounmpo. Over his own yet. Down it goes. Nice one there from Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo's got 14. I mean, just look at the box score right now. He's not only filling it up with these points, but in every facet of the game. Back to Hardaway. Robinson sets a screen for Hardaway. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. The Knicks shooting their seventh attempt at the foul line in this one. What shot, gentlemen? And the technical free throw is good. Courtney Lee, the journeyman, continues to excel no matter where it is that he unpacks his bags. Here's Azania. Eight points for him. The dish to Hardaway. Shot from 16. And the Knicks good for two. How about that? Mixing in the mid-range J. Hardaway finding some room out there to shoot one off. Always full of terrific insights. Bill Simmons, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. My insights, thank you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Brent, always cool, isn't it, to hear what Bill's thinking? He comes at things from a variety of angles. Yeah, the pop culture stuff and the bits from personal life and his interaction around the game. He certainly has a, a passion for basketball, and it's great that Bill's adding some color to the audience's experience. And he's been way off the mark this quarter. It's been ugly. And now here's his own young. He's covered closely. Shot clock at six. Here's Moutier, and that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. So close to getting the block there. You, you can live with those calls because you'd rather have a guy playing aggressive 
instead of playing it safe. Ilyasova, he's checked in for the Bucks. Matthew Dellavedova comes in for Eric Bledsoe. And the Knicks making a change here as well. Knox, he's checked in for Hardaway. Dellavedova kicks to Lopez. Ilyasova, a screen. Dellavedova, the pass to Ilyasova. And it's good, assisting on the play with Dellavedova. Ilyasova's got 10. Yeah, I love the communication and the chemistry between those teammates. Now here's Lee. Defense is right there. He kicks it to Moody. Over Delavidova. Here's Robinson. There's not a lot of guards in this league who like the Knights that Matthew Delavidova is going to match up across from them. Scrappy on that play. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. Bucks lead by three. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Coach, your guys are playing aggressively at the defensive end and sharing the ball offensively. Have you been satisfied with the effort so far? Well, I think just defensively we needed to be a little bit better. I think our pressure um, hopefully created a little bit of turnovers, created some tough shots, and then offensively they're getting into us. We want to drive it and uh, continue to play with the pass. Always moving that defense from side to side. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks for the great interview, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is our halftime show. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. It was a big-time first quarter for Giannis Antetokounmpo. He had 14 points, 6 rebounds, and 1 steal. Kenny, your thoughts on the Bucks' first half? Well, the three-point shooting was the key thus far. When you're knocking down those shots from the perimeter, it really spreads the floor. You demand respect from the defense. We'll see if they can keep it flowing in the second half. And Shaq, what are your thoughts on New York? They ran their offense very well in the first half. There were almost no four shots. It was good, smart basketball. The motion in their offense was terrific. They made those defenders work very hard. I like what I saw from them for the most part. And that's a wrap. With the third quarter approaching, we now send you back to Kevin and the crew. Welcome back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The buildings of downtown reflecting off the gentle waters of beautiful Lake Michigan. The third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. You look at Anadokounmpo in this one. He's been everywhere. Yeah, the rebounding, particularly on the offensive side, as good as it gets, he was bringing the effort down low. Yeah, those extra possessions, considering how hard it can be sometimes to find offense, become invaluable. And it's been a back-and-forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. Bucks leading by three, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the second half of basketball. Setting the floor for the Bucks. And this is down low with Lopez. Ludzo is out there with Brogdon, and it's Middleton in at the three spot. And for Porzingis, one of the next steps for him offensively, becoming a better distributor. Well, he showed last year, the first couple months of the year, to be a prolific scorer, and defenses know that too. So now the idea is, what if we crowd Porzingis? What if we double-team him? Can he make the next play to his teammate? We'll see if it starts to unlock itself this year for him. That's good from Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe is accustomed to 
playing alongside some other great playmakers in Kentucky. He was with John Wall with the Clippers. He was with Chris Paul and Phoenix. They had three guard lineups. So that ought to help out as they continue to get great chemistry. Giannis and Eric Bledsoe could be a devastating duo. Now here's Lopez. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Brogdon's got his third assist on the night. And about a minute of action so far in the third quarter. Now here's Burke, guarded by Bloodsoe. Burke dishes to Cantor. Over Lopez. New York, no good that time either. Well, Eric Bledsoe, as you mentioned, Brent, accustomed to playing on or off the ball. Well, that helps a little bit with some of the new offensive schemes that Mike Budenholzer is putting into place. He's got that huge wingspan, which he can always bogart a guy defensively. He's a nice fit on the Bucks roster, and he's a good build around that length. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, it is the era of positionless basketball, but how exactly did we get here? Well, new defensive rules at the turn of the century encouraged face-up scoring, motion-based offense, and guard play over isolation and post-ups. As a result, offensive rules have become more interchangeable. It has become a, a positionless game now. David, thank you very much. And here are the Knicks now following the bucket by the Bucks, And there's the call on Malcolm Brogdon. That'll be his second foul of the game. And now around two minutes gone by in this half. Will it go? And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. And Tim Hardaway Jr. returning to New York with a four-year, $71 million contract that surprised many. He's got to shoot better than he did last season to be worth that kind of money. free throw no good and Hardaway of course the son of former all-star point guard Tim Hardaway who played with the Warriors in the heat yeah I mean Hardaway Jr. much more comfortable I think off the ball in terms of spotting up and attacking definitely has worked on his ball handling and creating a little bit more of his own offense good on the second free throw a fearless shooter and a remarkable dunker Tim Hardaway Jr. is such a valuable rotation guy that you just want to have consistent effort from. And I think he's reaching that level now. Now, here's Adedekumbo. 14 points for him. Here's Burke. No good with the triple. Bucks leading by nine. And stolen by Burke. To the paint. It's so inbound to Kumbo. Out of bounds. New York takes possession. And looking now to numbers for Andy Takumbo. Coming off a terrific season. He put up about 27 points a game. 10 rebounds and 5 assists. And impressive numbers, no doubt. It's the kind of run we've come to expect from him. Synergy. All elements right now working together. And the game is coming so easy right now. He was all alone on that one. Nila Kina's got his third bucket of the night. And the key for Nila Kina is shooting with confidence, especially when it comes to his perimeter game. Here's Honda Takumbo. Good, and Bledsoe gets the assist. 16 points for Giannis Honda Takumbo. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. And you could try to key in on him, but that's tough. They run plays that routinely give him makeable looks. Now, here's Burke. He's got five. The wide-open look here for Perzingis. A three-pointer, no good. And I thought that was going to drop. It looked good from here. And the wide-open shot from Bledsoe. And there are the Bucks with another bucket. And Bledsoe showing some confidence now. Feels very much at ease shooting as soon as he touches the ball. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. 
and Malcolm Brogdon, the son of a lawyer and a college dean, no less. His maturity and thoughtfulness certainly reflect that upbringing. John Henson's checked in for Brooke Lopez. And here is the shot chart as we see how things are going for Anadokounmpo. This has been the kind of showing from him that everyone wanted to see. He's not going out of his way to force much, but when the shot is there for him, he hasn't hesitated one second to pull the trigger. Just a great night from the floor for him. Now, here's Burke. And there's the pass to Persingas. The second chance effort, and the shot is good. The Bucks' lead has been cut down to just eight points on the bucket from Ennis Cancer. The number of go-to moves and a soft touch. Cantor can crush you inside. Here's Brogdon. Seven points in the game. And he gets the bucket. That screen made it impossible for the defense to put up any kind of fight. Pass to Persingas. Passes it to Nilekina. Drain for two points. Nilakina has got 11 points. I really like the rhythm Nilakina plays with. Good at sensing when to shoot off the pass. Anadokounmpo kicks to Middleton. Back to Anadokounmpo. Rzingis with the steal. Hardaway with it. Eric Bledsoe covering. Hardaway passes to Nilakina. Screened by Porzingis to the paint. Stolen by Middleton. A three. Bledsoe. Offensive rebound. Outside, out of the Kumbo. Henson with the screen. Onto Takumbo, passes to Brogdon. Goes back up. That's good. Basket number five on a five for eight night shooting. Uh, he's been on his A game seeking good shots, and he's a huge reason why tonight they're winning. There's a screen by Cantor. Back to Hardaway. He got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. Seven points in the game. Now how about how he sets his man up there, runs him right into the screen, and then gets the basket. Here is Bloodson. He's got eight. Stolen by Cancer. And a fast break now for the Knicks. And the powerful one-handed slam. Like the execution there from Cantor, usually likes to score, this time, with the pass. It's Anadokounmpo on the wing. Shoots the three. That one doesn't drop. The Knicks go the other way with it. When this game is done, they'll be off to Miami to take on the Heat. That will conclude their brief two-game road trip. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. Now here's Bledsoe. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Eric Bledsoe, Greg, one of the league's best slashers. Yeah, he gets to the rim with regularity, and he finishes at a high rate, lives at the line. He is a nightmare in the open court. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The free throw drops for Eric Bledsoe. With today's superstars often joining forces, Brent, we hear some retired legends saying they wanted to beat their rivals, not join their rivals. Well, what do you think? I saw a lot of joining going on from some <laughs> of the guys who make those comments, Kevin. So uh, that sort of stuff just eludes me as to where it's coming from. This league has always been dominated by teams that have two, at least two, if not three, upper echelon superstar players. players superstar yes. players that end up winning titles so it's happening now it happened then it will continue to happen the one thing about Porzingis last year that we saw with the departure of Carmelo Anthony is could you lean on Porzingis to shoulder the offensive load he was phenomenal in that role last year before the injury so out on the perimeter above the rim finishing off breaks he's capable
he knocks down the first one. And talking about Porzingis, what really separates him as a scorer, Brent, is his jump shot. Well, at 7-3, we always think, man, he should be down on the post or have two feet in the paint working on this post-up game. That's not what he's about. He's terrific catching and shooting. He can handle the ball enough to take one or two dribbles to score at the rim. He's really good on the right side of the floor shooting over the top at the mid-range. And he can overpower defenders. So all of the offensive skills are there. Milwaukee, no good that time either. And lots of credit for the team around him. They're picking up the slack here tonight. He just can't buy a bucket right now. Bucks leading by four. Over to the left wing. Here's Bledsoe. He with the block. But he stays with it. Bledsoe kicks to Ilias over. Back to Bledsoe. Out to the wing. Just five on the clock. Here's Honda Takumbo. And the bank shot is good. Honda Takumbo's got four points in the quarter. Jump shot looking like it's coming around now for Giannis. Up top, Moutier. Defended by Della Badova. He gets that one. And that's about as easy as it gets. Not many guys are going to blow wide open layups at the professional level like that. Henson with the screen. Here's Bledsoe. Lee with the steal. Here's Azania. Misses the three. Milwaukee's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. Five of 12. Bledsoe passes to Ilias Sober. Over Azania. And it's blocked. Here's Moutier. Lee trying to get open. Moutier, no good. Bucks leading by four. A three. Bledsoe. Knicks with the rebound. Persingas has got rebound number eight now on the night. Well, he had one three-pointer in the first half, but so far in the second, he's come up with goose eggs. Here's Knox. On the wing, Lee. Guarded by Bledsoe. Knocked away. And here's the break. Here's Honda Takumbo. Buries the jumper to finish the break. Honda Takumbo has got 20 points. Knicks trail by six. Porzingis kicks to Moutier. Screen by Porzingis. Ante Takumbo pulls it in. Ante Takumbo's got double digit rebounds now in the game. And denied, he sends it right off the glass. To the inside. That's a great effort on defense. He definitely rushed his shot a little bit down low. And Ante Takumbo slams it in. Yeah, he might not be the biggest guy out there, but he's willing to rip that rim off. The Knicks shooting 35% or so in the third quarter. Whatever they're trying is not working. Pass to Knox. Porzingis with a screen on under the Kumbo. Six to shoot. Yep, it goes in, and the Milwaukee lead is cut down to six in the bucket from Knox. And Milwaukee has possession. They've led by as much as ten. Out of the Kumbo, kicks to Della Vidova. And here is Azonia. Ten points for him. Moutier, no good. There's 154 left here in the third quarter. And to Takumbo. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Della Vidova. Della Vidova's got five assists in the game. Moutier kicks to Lee. Now here's Moutier. Defended by Della Vidova. Over in the quarter for Zingas. Off target with his three. That is fantastic defense on one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Didn't give him an inch of room. The shot's good from Henson. Henson's got the lead up to 10 now for the Bucks. That's a pretty good move, Henson. I'll tell you what, being assertive when he has the ball like that, that's another dimension to the offense on the inside that they could use. Moutier, no good. And the shots just continue to say no in terms of falling. 
Elias Silva passes to Henson. Kumbo kicks to Delvadova. That one off the back iron and out. And that's really a function of the offense not working as it should. Yeah, maybe lazy play calling or just going through the motions on that possession. This often leads to a bad shot. Robinson's checked in for New York. Thirty-five seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Here's Moutier. The rebound by the Bucks. But whether the shots are wide open or contested, he is just having no luck right now, guys, with anything. Snell, that's good. There's 21 seconds left here in the third quarter. Well, it's going to be out, out of bounds. bounds. The Knicks will retain possession. Fifteen seconds left in the third quarter. Lee with the ball. The pass to Moutier. Over Della Vidova. Here's Robinson. And the miss. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. Bucks ahead as they end the third quarter on a 14-6 run. And after a quick break, we're going to come right back with the start of the fourth quarter. How about a look at today's State Farm assist of the game? And I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. Well, a great job with the eyes. And what separates great playmakers, as we know, Greg, is peripheral vision. And thanks again for joining us. Let's see what happens here in the fourth. Knicks trail by 12. And New York, looking at who they've got. Moody and Lee make up the backcourt. Hazonia out there with Robinson. And it's Knox in at the three. You know what? Tried to step in and cut him off, but just didn't get there quick enough. They set the pick. Robinson dishes to Lee. Five on the clock. Lays it up and banks it in. Lee's got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for the Knicks. Now here is Della Vadova. D right on him. Kicks it to Lopez. Over Robinson. Lopez, no luck. He's been a little bit disappointing in this game. However, his team has his back. They need a little bit more help from him. Moutier with a screen for Lee. Pass to Knox. It's deflected. Billy Silva not known for his defense, but with the length he has on those arms of his, he got to the ball. And the Bucks making a change here. Ogden's checked in. Then for the Knicks, Cantor checked in for Hazani. Frank Neely Kina comes in for Courtney Lee. And it's Burke in for Moutier. Bucks leading by 10. DiVincenzo uses both hands to slam it down. And very little fight put up by the defense as he made his way to the bucket for the jam. They did seem to take the cautious approach, Greg, when it came to defending that one. You're right. When you're playing from behind, you cannot let your opponent have things that are that easy. And that was easy. And he just leaves the D in the dust and explodes to the basket. You're right. Uh, maybe a momentum changer right there, huh? If anything could change the momentum, it's that kind of play. Cloud of smoke has people standing on their feet. And here we go. Burke heading to the hoop. And he trims the lead to single digits. <laughs> he really takes off. Just never looks back. Yeah, by the time anyone even thinks of chasing him, he's gone. Lopez a screen. 
to the inside. The shot misses. Excellent D from Cantor. Here's Knox. Count it. Now Brogdon. Leosova a screen. Here's Lopez, and he sinks the shot coming off a strong pick. He can play very well away from the basket. Lopez has the kind of range that not many seven-footers possess, and it's a great asset for a big man in today's game. Here's Knox. Canner in the corner. Neely Kina passes to Burke. Shot clock at five. Down low. Good on that shot. With that, the Bucks' lead is cut down to just six points with the basket from Ennis Cancer. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed ten straight points in the paint. Bobbed up there for Lopez. And pushing it up, here's New York. Knox with the ball. Took him no time at all on that one. And when it rains, it pours. Another jump shot tickles the twine. Lopez a screen. Even Genzo lays it in without an inch of room around him. And the Bucks lead by six. And giving up some height. He just finds a way to carve out a little separation. And this is sort of the joust of the NBA where the aggressive player, more often than not, wins out. Poke loose. He kicks it to Lopez. Excellent D from Cancer. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Chris Middleton's checked in for Milwaukee. And New York with a change here, too. Hardaway's checked in for Knox. Knicks trail by six. Some nice passing by New York here. Now, here is Robinson. There's a screen by Cantor. Robinson a screen on Brogdon. Here's Burke. Lopez with the block. Here's Brogdon. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Really good angle of attack there for Brogdon. Just saw a little angle and took it. The Knicks have gone six of nine on their field goal attempt since the start of the fourth quarter. There's a screen by Kanner. Neely Kina kicks to Burke. He could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Uh, amazingly, the Bucks, one of the slower teams in the league last season in terms of their pace. And when you're talking about a team with tremendous length and athleticism, you think that maybe speed would come along with it and that they get out and thrive in transition. Not the case last year. Free throw, no good. And the Bucks still a top 10 offense last season. Got to the line in bunches. I got to the line, got into the interior, got into the paint. But their outside shooting is still a concern, Kevin. When you're down a lot of points uh, and you need to stretch out the defense to, to come back in games, it's not something that they could do last year. So maybe looking to pick up a few guys on their roster to help expand the three-point shooting game. In the corner, Middleton with it. All three off the mark. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Chris Middleton. That is his first foul of the game. And now only one away from being in the penalty. And the Bucks making a change here. Bloodsoe's checked in. And New York with a change here, too. Rosingas is checked in. On the wing, Hardaway. Cantor sets the pick for Hardaway. Shot off the pick. No good that time. And Milwaukee will come the other way. They've held a 12-point lead early. Middleton the pass to Lopez. It's Brogdon on the wing. Misses the wing jail. Knicks trail by eight. Hardaway with it. Now guarded by Middleton. 
They get it back. Brzingis fouled in the act of shooting. A three-point play chance coming up. Brzingis, a good effort on the board right now. Every inch of that seven-foot, three-inch frame coming into play. On to the Kumbos, check in for Ilyasova. Free throw good from Porzingis. Well, the talent for Porzingis is off the charts, and the seven foot three Latvian has some incredible post moves. A lethal jumper just keep pushing his talent envelope. Now, here's Bloodzo. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. That's on Ennis Cantor. Yeah, easy call. That free throw good from Bloodsoe. We're still waiting for that first miss from the line to this half. So hits them both. It felt like he was a little hesitant in the first half, but really he's amping himself up here and battering around to get himself to the free throw line. The drive by Cantor. That one falls. Cantor's got six in the quarter. Great body control for the big man. You love how Cantor can take the hit and still score. Near the three-point line, it's Budso. Bullseye! And the Bucks lead by seven. And what a turnaround from the first half. I mean, he's been incredible here in the second half. Hardaway kicks to Cantor. Out of bounds. Milwaukee takes possession. Here's a look at what's coming up for New York. They'll be facing Hassan Whiteside and the Miami Heat. Then on Friday, they'll take on Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. And for the matchup with the Pacers, that's a contest that could easily go either way. Small mistakes could be the difference, and both teams will need to be at their best. Basket good. And now a nine-point Milwaukee lead. Beautiful touch, and Giannis, with his height and quickness, he can get the mid-range shot pretty much any time he wants. On the Kumbo on the double team. Here's Persingas, and it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. We look at the New York Knicks, desperate to compete again and get themselves back into the playoffs. Remember, 1973, their last championship year with the likes of Willis Reed, Walt Frazier, Earl the Pearl Monroe. They could, maybe they could use a couple of those guys now. Free throw good from Porzingis. And since 1973, only two finals appearances for the New York Knicks. Yep, 1994, they lost to the Rockets in seven games. And in 99, that was the lockout shortened season. They lost to the Spurs eventually on their home court in five games. No finals appearances for the New York Knicks in the new millennium. Looking comfortable there from the line. Knows he needs to come through for his team at the charity stripe. Bloodso kicks to Adetokounmpo. There's the pick. Here's Middleton. Shoots from the baseline. Porzingis with the rebound. Porzingis has got rebound number 11 for him here tonight. Pass to Burke. Outside, Porzingis. Knocks it loose. 
Hardaway passes to Persingas. And the rejection by Adetokounmpo. Here's Middleton. It falls for his fifth field goal tonight. Now shooting five for eight. Keep your eyes on the prize. Middleton did just that and sunk the shot despite getting roughed up a bit. Here's Nilakina. Pass to Persingas. Bob pass to Persingas. Can't hit that one. And a little frustration now missing on the catch and flush. Yeah, sometimes the easy play is the right play. You take a chance when you go for that big finish. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Outside Hardaway. Cantor inside. Lopez is there. Fades. And with that, the Bucks' lead is cut down now to just seven on the bucket from Ennis Cantor. And they've worked the ball around so well tonight for those quality looks from mid-range. Now here's Adetokounmpo. Back to Bledsoe. Shoots from 14. And that's good from Adetokounmpo on the assist by Bledsoe. Bledsoe's got his sixth assist on the night. Knicks trail by nine. And here is Burke. Ogden kicks to Middleton. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Chris Middleton has worked his way back and come a long way. The former second round pick becoming a consistent starter in the league. Well, Chris Middleton is such a versatile scorer and because he has the ability to put the ball down on the floor, sometimes defenders are not as willing to close out to him, but last year was in the 74th percentile in spot up shot. jump shots. It can be devastating from there. And that one falls for Middleton. And Middleton can hurt you from anywhere. But his mid-range game, Brent, his mid-range game stands out. Yeah, people don't really realize how effective Chris has been from the mid-range. He's up there with Kevin Durant statistically in some of the numbers. And... The fact that he's got that long frame, any switchable defender that's smaller than him gives him the immediate advantage. And Chris Middleton, two seasons ago, tore his hamstring completely off the bone. I mean, he's come back and hasn't missed a beat. One of the most well-rounded players you'll see. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. And Chris Middleton with maybe Greg, his best season yet in 2017-18. It just seems like he gets better every year. Uh, former second round pick, now all-star caliber. He's worked extremely hard, stayed in the lab, and now we're seeing the results. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Kevin, during that last break, I heard David Fisdale talking to his team. He is not happy with the sloppy play offensively. He said, make the easy play, take care of the ball. We can't afford to just give away golden opportunities. And we'll see if they can clean it up, guys. And the pass to Persingas. Inside. Out to Hardaway. Good on the three-point shot. And Tim Hardaway Jr., you can see he's got good foundational form for a three-point shot. Consistency would help. Milwaukee leading by eight. Bledsoe dishes to Middleton. Pass to Lopez. And it's Middleton penetrating. Score the basket. It's number six for him this game. Six for nine. 67% shooting. Man, how about the focus there? Middleton taking the contact well and then completes the drive with some style. Now here's Porzingis. And there's the call on Giannis Antetokounmpo. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. That free throw good from Porzingis.
Both shots good from the strike. And he's given them a good contribution at the line tonight. Getting there a lot and delivering on his opportunities. Bledsoe left side. Lopez sets a screen for Bledsoe. Outside, out of the Kumbo. Shoots the three. And there's Bledsoe on the assist by Hunter de Kumbo. Hunter de Kumbo's got his third assist on the night. Knicks trail by 11. To the inside. The shot's good from Cantor. Cantor's got 12 points in just the second half. Well, I don't know how to say show in Turkish, but Cantor's putting one on right here. It's Hunter de Kumbo on the wing. Over Perzingis. Onto the Kumbo, no good. Here's Nila Kina, and the Knicks getting another bucket right there. A, a welcome sign. Nila Kina has the form and touch. Needs to keep draining these mid-range jumpers. Now here's Onto the Kumbo. Here's Bledsoe. Middleton trying to break free. Shots good by Bledsoe. Bledsoe's got 19 points. I mean, he is tearing the defense apart, and let's face it, they have not brought their A game on that side of the ball. Now, here's Burke, guarded by Bledsoe. It's Brogdon on the wing. And a great assist by Ante Kumbo as that one goes in. Ante Dekumbo's got four assists now tonight. Knicks trail by 11. Burke with it. Cancer inside. Lopez covering. Good on the bucket. Just a grinder. Always doing the dirty work on the offensive glass. And that's one of the things he brings to the table. Takes it down to Middleton. Takes the three. And another three for Milwaukee. And these are the types of games where one team clearly has the edge. Tonight, it will be a win by a large margin for the Bucks. When you shoot this well from three-point range, you're really hard to stop. The defense didn't rotate out fast enough to stop the hot shooter. Yeah, exactly, Kevin. They were lethal from deep. And ever win important. And this one will go down as win number three. And against a conference opponent, always good to take that first win of the season series to establish a psychological edge. And we watched them all night long. No one could really stop them. Just another excellent game it was for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Well, a consistent intensity is what he brought to the floor here. He hit the glass hard, and he came up with a ton of rebounds. And saving their best for last. Tremendous run here to seal the win. And you could just see everything coming together like a perfect storm, and they just rolled on through. Sinks it, and the shot from Persingas. It's a nice-looking stroke from the mid-range. Porzingis, at his height, he knows it. He can get that shot off anytime he wants. Outside, out of the Kumbo. And so the Bucks take the win. Some good moments throughout this one, but they have the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way they executed on both ends of the floor. Completely under control for the vast majority of the game and whenever there was a misstep they just didn't allow it to fester and that's why they're going to walk away with the win and chance now to send it over to david aldridge standing by courtside david thanks very much brooke congrats on the win how important was this game for you you know, it's uh, very big for us. It was a good benchmark. Uh, we've been trying to improve every game. You know, we've been getting better these past few games. And, uh, you know, we know these guys are a very good team, so we wanted to come out and make a statement. You sure did make a big statement tonight, Brooke. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Thank you. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. So long, everyone.